if Claire comes here and drinks from it, her needs are instantly going to go up. Now, they're not very low right now, but look at that fun need. You know, about a quarter of it is gone right now. After she takes a few sips of coffee, everything is going to be fully green. Her needs are now completely filled. How awesome is that, you guys? This object alone makes gameplay in The Sims so much more enjoyable. Hi, everyone. It's Ian here with Nostalgic Games, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Being an avid player of The Sims 1, I have learned over a number of years how to install mods, custom content, and custom neighborhoods into your game. And today, I want to show you guys how to do just that. I'm going to reveal some secrets, some housekeeping, and show you how you can add a lot more dynamic gameplay to a game that's over 20 years old. So let's go ahead and dive on in. For the first part of today's tutorial, I'm going to show you guys how you can download custom content into your game. To be able to do that, you're going to need to navigate to wherever your game is located. For me, it is in my C drive under program files times 86. I'm going to go ahead and double click on that folder. And as you will see, there are quite a few folders here, but do not be intimidated. It's pretty easy to navigate. We just need to simply come to the folder labeled downloads. Now, as you can see, there are already a lot of folders here. Don't mess with any of these. A lot of these are core and vital objects. Some of them even NPCs that belong to the game. I'm going to go ahead and show you guys an example as to how we can add custom furniture into our game. Parsimonious.org is a Sims 1 custom content site that is still around today. And I feel that they have some of the best custom content available. I would highly recommend that you check this website out. I will link it in the description box below. For today's tutorial, we will be downloading some furniture pieces from this site. So full disclosure, this site is great, but it was created probably 20 years ago. So the layout and navigation is a little monotonous. The site's pretty hard to navigate. So if we click on living room over here, we have about 32 pages containing various living room sets, which you can download. So on page one here, we have this collection and this shows you everything that is readily available to download. I'm going to go ahead and navigate to page two. We have the Long Island Deco, which I absolutely love. If you have seen any of my previous Sims 1 Let's Plays, you might have seen this furniture set in my game. It is my absolute favorite. I'm going to go ahead and use this for my example today. So we're going to just navigate down here on this page. And as you can see, we have all of the individual items listed here. Now, unfortunately, we have to download each and every item individually. Now, I'm going to show you really quickly how I organize and lay out my files. This is called the Long Island Deco. So I'm going to go ahead and come into my downloads folder and make a new folder. And I am going to title it Long Island Deco, and I'm going to do an underscore and put CC for custom content. That way I will know that this was downloaded and that it is not a default in the game. That way, if at any point in time I want to delete any of the objects or if any of them are creating crashing or issues, I can safely go in here and just remove that entire file or eliminate the file that I have found that is corrupt. So I highly recommend doing this to stay organized. So I've gone ahead and opened up my Long Island Deco folder. Let's go ahead and navigate back to the objects and we're going to download each and every one of them. So if you just click on the object, it will actually download the zip file. So we're going to do that for all of these really quickly here. Just click on all of them all at once, making sure that we got everything. The end table, I still need the lamp, stool, love seat, rug, couch, table lamp, wall lamp, and TV. So I have gone ahead and dropped in all of these zip files into my Long Island Deco CC folder. 
So by extracting the armchair, we now actually have the armchair file and we can go ahead and safely delete the zip file. You don't want to keep the zip file in the game. Next up is the bookcase. We're going to go to extract here and quickly we should have that in the game as well and we now do gonna go ahead and safely remove the bookcase folder next up is the coffee table and we're gonna go ahead and just repeat this step for each and every item making sure that we always remove the initial zip folder once we have extracted the file all right, I have gone ahead and extracted each and every file and I was very careful and made sure that I deleted every zip file because again, we just don't want those zip files in here. We only want these packaged files. Next thing I wanna talk about are mods. Now, mods really did not exist in the early Sims games, especially the Sims 1. However, there is a term referred to as a hacked object which essentially is an object that has been hacked, allowing you to add gameplay elements. So essentially, in many ways, a hacked object, if you will, is basically a modern version of a mod. In modern Sims games, mods are essentially script files that you add into your game. That was never an option in The Sims 1. However, you can add objects that have been hacked with script files that allow dynamic gameplay. So the first hacked object that I find crucial to add to the game is the Super Sculpture. Now, this is actually an object that existed in The Sims 2 that was re-rendered and scaled down for The Sims 1. It is a decorative object that you place in the household. However, when you click on it, it will give you a number of really cool options such as adding household funds, adding magic coins, and even gaining new friends and love interests. It's a really cool hacked object, which I highly recommend. Just be sure that you download the correct version dependent upon what kind of expansion packs you have installed. So we're gonna go ahead and click on the object. And once again, we're gonna have a little zip file pull up here. I took the liberty of creating a hacked objects folder. Now, most of the time the hacked objects will work fine in the game, but they can be the objects that can sometimes add corruption to the game. So just make sure that you have a way to easily navigate to every item in case you need to delete one. I already have the super sculpture in my game as well as the hacked coffee pot. The hacked coffee pot is probably my favorite hacked object of all time. I hate filling needs in the sim one, I place it in every household that I play off of and I place one in every community lot that I play in as well because what it does is it allows your Sims to drink a cup of coffee which maxes out all of their needs. I highly, highly recommend this mod. It is amazing. So the hacked coffee pot can be found at Gnome's website. It's called mistymadge.com. Again, I will link it in the description box below, but you want to download this hacked coffee pot and you can just click on this zip file here. I already have it installed in my game and it is here in my hacked objects folder. Now I'm going to share a really big secret with you guys. Not too long ago, I did a superstar let's play and I cheated fame in my game. Now I am someone who is never patient with the superstar expansion pack. In my opinion, becoming a celebrity is so hard, but that can be changed with the magic of a hacked object. By downloading this gold star, you will be able to transform your Sims immediately into superstars so we're going to go ahead and download this object as well and I will give you a little demonstration of it in the game. When you extract files, sometimes you will have multiple files, which gets a little confusing. Sometimes there's a GIF. That is just a image showing you what the object looks like. There are also text files in case you need a refresher on instructions. But the only file you really need to worry about here are the IFF files. Those are what you want to drag into the game. So now I have the super sculpture, the hack coffee pot, as well as the gold star. 
So those are the three hacked objects that I will share with you guys today and we will look at them in the game. Now that we've downloaded some new furniture as well as hacked objects, I now want to show you guys how you can download houses to put into your game. Now in my opinion The Sims resource is the best place to go to download homes, but there are a few things here that can get a little frustrating. Unlike some of the newer Sims games where you have package files, with the files in The Sims 1, if someone built a home with custom content, unless you have that custom content in your game, it will not be transferred over into that house. So for example, let's say hypothetically this home had windows and doors that I did not have in my game, they are not going to load properly. A lot of the creators in the early Sims games did not link all of the custom content that they had, so it can be a big hit or a miss sometimes when you download homes. Now this house in my opinion looks like it's probably not using any custom content and I do like it a lot, so I would love to add this to my game. We're going to go ahead and click on the download button. All right, well, I've gone ahead and downloaded the house. I want to show you a few things, though, because it's a little different to add a home into the game. You are not going to come into the downloads folder. Instead, you're going to navigate back to your Sims Complete Collection, and we're going to scroll all the way down to user data. We have a folder that's called user data, a folder called user data 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. Now, this is very crucial to understand. These user data folders are the neighborhood folders that are in your Sims games. So neighborhood one is user data, neighborhood two is user data two, and so on and so forth. So user data is the neighborhood that contains Bella Goth, Betty and Bob Newby, as well as a few homes. If you navigate in this folder and go to houses, these are all of the houses in the game currently in that neighborhood. If I drag house one into the house folder of user data, whatever house one is currently in the neighborhood, it will be replaced with that house. So this is where things get really confusing. You really need to understand the number system of the homes in the Sims one. If you don't, that's where you can override existing families and really screw things up. So what I really highly recommend is just to put all of your custom content homes for now in neighborhood three so you can see what lots they're going on. And then if you ever want to move one into another neighborhood, you would just clone that same house file and move it into that correlating folder if that makes sense. So now that we're in neighborhood three, I'm going to go ahead and replace the current house one with the house one that I have downloaded and you want to be sure to select replace the file in the destination. So now that we've downloaded a house in the game, as well as some hacked objects and new furniture, let's go ahead and boot up The Sims and look at all of the cool new things that we now have. All right, well, here's the custom home that we just downloaded from the internet, and it looks like everything transferred over nicely. I believe that they did not use any custom content when they built this house, which is fantastic. And if we navigate over here to seating, we might start seeing some of the custom objects that I had downloaded as well for furniture. And we do. Here is that little footstool from the Long Island Deco collection that we purchased. And we have the couch and the love seat as well, which I absolutely love. There's even two versions of the love seat, which is nice. There's a version with two pillows and a version with one. I really love options. Here's the couch. And I even think that it came with some tables. Yes, a coffee table and a TV I know was also part of the custom content that we downloaded. I know I'm not making it look very pretty right now, but I just wanted to show you in a nutshell. There are all the new objects that we downloaded. Let's go ahead and navigate back into the neighborhood view so I can just show you guys really quickly those hacked objects and how they work because they're really, really cool. All right, well, here we are at Claire Charming's house. So the coffee pot is in appliances and it is right here. 
we're gonna go ahead and put that on our counter. Now, if you wanna control the intensity of the coffee pot, you will also need to place the correlating sign on the wall. It's a little silly, but if you click on that here, it will give you a few additional options, but first let's just focus on the coffee pot only. If Claire comes here and drinks from it, her needs are instantly gonna go up. Now they're not very low right now, but look at that fun need, you know, about a quarter of it is gone right now. After she takes a few sips of coffee, everything is gonna be fully green. And see everything go up? Even just by touching it, it's going up. There we go. Her needs are now completely filled. How awesome is that, you guys? This object alone makes gameplay in The Sims so much more enjoyable. I cannot stress enough how crucial it is to have this hacked object in your game. It just makes the gameplay so much more fun. So the next object we definitely need to check out is the Super Sculpture. To get to the Super Sculpture, it's a little confusing. You actually need to go to the miscellaneous category and switch to all, and it is in the top row here between the mirror and the turkey. We're gonna go ahead and place the Super Sculpture on our counter, and I wanna show you just how amazing this really is. If we click on this object, a whole bunch of cheats are gonna show up. We can give Claire a promotion. Claire is currently a paramedic, but I wanna give her a promotion. We'll click on the super sculpture and click promotion. And Claire has now been promoted to a nurse. Claire, we're not gonna have you go to work today, sorry. Instead, I'm gonna have you fall in love with someone. We're gonna click on love and we're gonna select Eldon Hick. Eldon and I have fallen in love with each other and Claire now has a hundred out of a hundred relationship with Eldon. Now my favorite component of all are the magic items that we can now add to our inventory without having to go to Magic Town or without having to create them ourselves. So if you were playing with a magical family, this is just so, so freaking awesome. <laughs> You also can even click on get money, add a thousand simoleons to your household, or add more magic coins, which is really, really great, especially if you want to move your sim to Magic Town. So in a nutshell, that is the super sculpture, which in my opinion is probably the most powerful hacked object ever made for the Sims 1 franchise. The last object I wanna show you that's my absolute favorite is in the decorative category. And if you click on other, we have this little starlight statue here. So maybe instead of being a nurse, Claire wants to be a five-star celebrity. So I went ahead and got Claire an agent, and now we can click on this little starlight and make me famous and watch what will happen, you guys. She is now a five-star celebrity with the click of a button. This is just so freaking powerful because I cannot tell you, back when Superstar came out, I was never able to make my Sims five-star celebrities. It was just that hard. All right, you guys. Well, that wraps up today's tutorial. Hopefully you found this helpful and insightful, and now you won't be intimidated or scared to start putting some awesome custom some content and hacked objects into your Sims 1 game. Happy simming and stay tuned for more Sims 1 tutorials coming soon. Bye!